guys. We just cured anxiety. Oh my god! All you have to do is stay a minute. Just take your time. The clock is ticking. So stay. All you have to do is stay. So let's talk about the tragedies, man. I mean, let's wow, this is crazy. It's crazy. This young man right here. A uh, semi-driver caused a fiery crash on I-70, identified as Rogue, Rogel, Raj. Look, I'm just going to say L-R-A, all right? Al Al Aguilera, all right? Agu I'm going to go with Aguilera. All right, so Aguilera, a semi-truck driver has been identified in a deadly crash of at least 28 vehicles near 70 in Denver Park West. Thursday afternoon. At least four people are confirmed dead. These four victims were each uh, the single occupant of their cars. So sad. So sad. There's some video that I got right here that you guys going to peep out right quick. Um, that that showed him driving erratic. Well, I don't think he was driving erratic, but he blew past the one dude and he thought he was he was gonna die or whatever. I don't know about that. Guys, we just cured anxiety. Oh my god! Jesus Christ, we almost fucking died. Somebody pull that son of a bitch over. Investigators now are not sure how many people died in today's crash and fire on I-70 at Denver West. Multiple deaths is what they are saying. Sky 9 is out over the crash scene tonight where the vehicles still have not been moved. Lakewood police say that at least one body was found in the wreckage after their initial announcement that they thought one person had died. We know that six people went to the hospital. All of them survived and that includes the semi driver believed to have triggered the crash. Again, at least three semis and 12 cars were involved in this, and there may be more. The highway and the bridge above it significantly damaged. West Metro says that one of their firefighters was also hurt, possibly hit by debris. All right, so a driver has been identified as Aguilera. Um, he went to court for the 28 car smash up on I-70 in Denver, man. Look, I want to shout out to my man, D Nitty. He was the one that actually sent me the information first. I didn't get a chance to get around it because, you know, you guys, I'm, I'm so busy. I am so busy. But it was tragic. It, it was tragic. Um, it says here the 23-year-old truck driver who police say caused the accident of a 28 a uh, car piled up Thursday, left four people dead, allegedly told authorities that his brace stopped working while he was barreling at 85 miles per hour down the highway and didn't drive off the road because he didn't want to roll his truck. Kim, right now the investigation is a little bit slow started because firefighters are still working at this point to put out hot spots. Investigators can't get in there and really do their work until the firefighters clear them and say this is safe enough to proceed. Eastbound I-70 is still closed tonight. It will be for a while. There is a slight detour to get westbound. I would not recommend it. You cannot get under the bridge tonight, so they're taking people off the highway over a ramp and then back down again. But this is going to be closed for a long time. They've got a lot of work still to do. So just a little recap. Here's what we know so far. Semi truck driver coming eastbound into the city here, losing control somehow. Investigators aren't sure if this was a brake issue, a mechanical issue, or what happened out here today. But just under that bridge, the semi I crashed into other traffic, traffic that we now know was backed up from another accident further ahead on I-70 this afternoon. Police tell us that semi-truck drivers survived the crash. Their hope is they can talk to him later and learn more about what happened here. And CDOT says that fire damaged the road, damaged the bridge, and they've got a lot of work to do still before this road can reopen. Maybe he should have drove off the road and, and, and drove into the medium to at least, you know, slow the slow the truck momentum down. Why you didn't, if your brace went out, why you didn't, um, well, maybe he was scared. I mean, he is 24, of course. 
you know, maybe he didn't get on the phone to call 911 and say, hey, I'm a runaway truck. Uh, I'm heading down I-70. Uh, you know, I'm going to need some police assistance to uh, clear a pathway for me or, you know, or figure out what we can do to slow down this uh, runaway truck. But unfortunately, he didn't do that. And he he smashed into the uh, cars and, and, and caused a lot of dev a lot of devastation. I bumped it from somebody else, I'm sorry. Yeah. Throw another shrimp on the Barbie. Oh, that's not a good one. Yeah. You can see harvest a little bit on this truck somewhat. Good luck getting that fire out. It's. I think they're just going to have to let it burn out. I'm starting to put some of the smaller fires out. Goodness. Don't cross the streams, that's a reference to Ghostbusters. Hey, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is John Romero. I'm a public information officer here with the Lakewood Police Department. Uh, first and foremost, we just want to extend our deepest sympathies uh, to the families of the victims uh, of this uh, tragic incident from last night. Um, right now, the, the number one focus of the Lakewood Police Department is to, to fully investigate this crash and to, uh, to bring justice to these families and for these victims as well. Look, this, this game is nothing to play with. It's nothing to play with. Why was you going that fast in the first place? I don't know. Why Why you was going that fast in the first place? He's a resident out of Texas, and that's where we kind of stand as, as far as the suspect goes in this. The investigation showed that he was driving eastbound on I-70 in his semi, the one that we've seen on some of the videos, the flatbed carrying the, uh, the load of wood. He's going to truck ramp, the truck ramp. Yep. I don't know what to do, I don't know. He's a bitch. He's a bitch, he's a bitch, because he's a bitch. He's a bitch, he's a bitch. Look, he's a bitch. He's a bitch. He's a bitch. Look, he's a bitch. What did I tell you? He's a bitch, he's a bitch. He's gonna wreck that thing. He's gonna pull over. He needs to get the fucking rats, what he should have done. He loses control of the vehicle coming down I-70. Traffic was backed up just on the uh, south side of the Denver West Parkway given the uh, crash that was way up by Ward Road and Kipling Street. At that time of day, we all know I-70 can be very, very jammed up. He uh, can't stop, doesn't stop, and ends up colliding with several cars. And as a result of that, the fire ensues. And Kim, even tonight, as people are driving right in front of us, they're slowing down, taking a look at this scene right behind. From this vantage point, you can almost see the crash site in its entirety, the scorched semi trucks, the also now burned up cars. The crews still working here to put out some of those hot spots, as you heard Jennifer mentioning earlier. Now, even at this late hour, as I was talking about, people are lined up on both sides of the highway gawking. They're still in shock that this happened all together. We've been talking to people throughout the afternoon and evening. The one thing witnesses keep telling us will stay with them was how loud everything was at that time. But for a few of them, that scare came so much closer. Aguilera 
arrest advocate released Saturday afternoon details the panic on the road, both for Aguilera and other commuters as the runaway truck hurled down from the high country, from the highway at terrifying speeds. Aguilera, a Texas resident, appeared in court for the first time Saturday when a judge found probable cause for his arrest on investigation of a Hitler homicide. Aguilera told police at the hospital after the crash that he lost control of his semi-trailer traveling east on I-70 and that his brakes stopped mouth, I mean stopped functioning. He said he noticed he was going 85 miles per hour, the advocate said, so he maneuvered to the right shoulder to avoid stop traffic. Aguilera saw the shoulder was blocked by another semi, according to the police, so he chose to swerve back into the lanes of stop traffic. He didn't drive off the road, the advocate said, because he didn't, ro he didn't want to roll his semi. Let's think about this for a minute, man. I mean... He caused a massive crash and devastation, and he survived to tell about it? Yes, he did have a CDL license, and it was out of Texas. Um, is cooperating, and we did use a translator in the investigation uh, for the interview, uh, but there was some English being spoken. Aguilera said he thought he was going to die, so he just closed his eyes before hitting the stop traffic. All right, thank you, Jordan. Lakewood police said traffic was at a standstill, as we talked about, on I-70 prior to this crash because of this earlier crash. It was about three and a half miles east. Ten people were hurt in that crash. It happened about a half hour prior. A school bus and a semi collided. At least six of those injured were taken to the hospital. This was on eastbound I-70 at Ward Road. Jefferson County says two dozen elementary school students were on that bus. Police did say that all the students have been reunited with their parents. Glad you guys still rocking with me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys have anything, have any videos you want me to react to, send them.